Hope the tape's running. It's all body movement. <laughs> oh no. I know. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in a hole here when uh, I, I'm looking up, up at you. You're going to look about 20 feet tall. <laughs> now that's better. Is that better? Okay, perfect. This will be easy. Uh, yeah, there you go. Now you're not so much in the hole. <laughs> I still feel I'm sitting in a hole, but it's all right. <laughs> I can't remember everything. <laughs> but I remember when you first started here. Who 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 in Basel did you get along with more than Well, you me? know, I can remember. I used to I, come and you put the goddamn I, even microphone in front of my I want everybody yes. here. <laughs> even before that, you know what you said to me, which um, we were sitting, I was sitting in Miss Nell's and I was brand new in town. And you came over to me and you said, Terry, are you handy? And I said, what do you mean? He says, if you know how to use a toolbox and possibly a hammer and maybe some wrenches. And I said to myself, yeah, I'm pretty good, but, and I had concerns, but now I know exactly what you mean. When you move a bit rural, you have to know things about pumps and, That's right, and, for and sure. bolts and nuts. And yeah, so yeah. every day, Folks, as you go out to our local hardware stores, sometimes you'll see Alex there moseying around the wrenches and the bolts and nuts. And and he does buy something always. And there's a shed here full of doubles of things I've been in before. He buys things, but I got to say, he mostly goes to talk to people. So when you go down an aisle and you see Alex, maybe go down and get the cat food first or something else. <laughs> because... You might be half a day. I love to, when we meet in the grocery store, and I've done this several times, I'll crash my cart into their cart just to see the looks on their face. They look up first, and they're gonna, it looks like Alex is going to pop me one, and then the big smile comes over. I say, well, how are you folks? Oh, God. We're in Alex and Rhoda's backyard overlooking the Muskoka River. This is the mouth of the Muskoka as it heads south, the south branch, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day in Baysville. So, here's my questions. I have a few. Now, they're not written yeah, down, so right. I can slide secret ones in. I can answer any questions, because I've heard them all. What do you think was the greatest invention in your time? The greatest invention? Yeah. Well, I got I got to go back to uh, health reasons, and I think that uh, they're doing an amazing job right now. They are they are finding so many things in the, uh, in that darn disease, cancer, that, that it makes me feel a lot better. So I think the world is going to be in a much better position in a few more years, discovering the first uh, cure for cancer. So all the seniors that are out there, hang in there. All your relatives are going to have a great time in the way back when the years go forward. In the 2030, 2040, you'll be flying around in flying saucers and wish the hell you were back, <laughs> back in the good old days of the 40s and 50s and 60s. There were the times to be alive because that's when everything was being developed. Than what it is today. And, uh, enough. <laughs> enough is enough. I tell you, Ron, can you tell us anything about how it was to live with a guy like this for that many years? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I have no complaints. Really, with a sense of humor. Yeah, you know, that's what he has all the time. Now, after this many years, Alex, a hundred years, you've had a lot of meals. I want to know what would be your favorite meal today if you were going to eat your oh. biggest wonderful meal. If you, if I could wave my magic wand and say, Alex, here's your dinner, what would it be? It, that's an easy one to answer. I was brought up, my family was six kids, and it's all we ever eat. At least twice a day was mashed potatoes and gravy and onions on the side. We, we ate, ate food in the bulk because it was hard to get in the, the, the end of the depression years that was. So I'm very fortunate to be married to somebody like Rhoda. I know. Looking I know. after me. 
<laughs> Very well. Alex, tell us a bit about this property here and how you came to get it and, and acquire it and, and why did you choose Lake of Bays and Baysville? 1933, 1934, I was standing here, here, right here. But nothing was here but me and my father and that's when the government was handing out land free. Acres, acres of farmers to start farming and build up the area. That's in that, those years, in the 30s. These Ellis boys, where they were great guys, there, and, and they were uh, fixing the land up for their, their, their family and everything. And they had a little cabin over near the water in the lake, in the bays there, with a marina opposite the marina in Baysville, there, some property over there. And, and his dad wanted to. Make money it was scarce in those days, you know, when you were getting stuff from the government and things like that. So he said, my dad will sell one of those lots up there if you go and talk to him. So they came over, and I remember I was about 10 years old, and they were talking, and my dad bought one of the lots first here, and, and then bought another one the following year, which ended up about 120 feet frontage. 1934, 30. 34, 35, 36, pieces, like that. Two pieces of property. There's two pieces of property, that's this right. One was then, and the later one, which where we're sitting right now, was bought in 1941 from the Ellis family. Most of the people, yeah. the older people in Basel, will remember all these names I'm saying. The Ellis boys, and Jack, Bill, Dode Ellis, and all these people. They were great, great people. And, and they, they were the pioneers of the whole area up here in Beaverville. That was just one family that were the pioneers. They owned the land right clean through to Burl Marie Road there. And, and over the years, people came up here and bought a lot here, bought a lot there, bought another lot there, and that's how it all started. What about changes to the area? Do you, um, what do you think? Has, has the whole place changed for the better, or would you prefer if we were back in the 50s and 60s here? No, I, I think it has changed for the better, for sure. I was a, I'm a great one for progress. You can't stand still. If you stand still, you end up an old tree and fall over dead. <laughs> so you got to go ahead with everything that goes on in the world. If you don't, you're left behind. Rhoda, any advice to the younger people today? The wisdom is you have to get out and see things. Yeah, that's for sure. And like, don't assume things, find out for yourself. But you do have to get out and see what's, what, there's so much out there to see. I mean, we were at our ages, we've, we've been, you know, we've traveled different places, but there's still so much I wish I could still see, but I won't get there. But um, yeah, there's just so much out there. You just have to get out and see. And Alex, have you got different advice or are you going to go with no, that? No, that I go along with that. It's, that's a very right what uh, Rhoda said. It's, you, you've got to think positive. Never think negatively. Always think positively. Because there's one thing you can't not stop, and that's time. Tomorrow always comes. What is bad today will be good tomorrow. And if you think that way and keep a good sense of humor, brother, you're going to be a hundred years old. <laughs> I am Alec Moeller, and I'm 100 years old today.